Problem one, the integral of cosine of 3x minus sine of 3x dx is equal to what? All right, the first thing that we need to do, since there's a subtract and sine, is just go ahead and separate the two integrals. Okay, and then since I have the cosine of something and the sine of something in parentheses, for both of these, I'm going to let u equal 3x, and then the derivative of 3x is 3. So I notice on each of them, I'm missing a 3 on the inside. So I'll have to put a one-third on the outside. And then if I do that, I'll end up getting one-third integral of cosine u minus one-third integral of sine u. And now it's just remembering what those equal. The integral of cosine is simply sine, so it's going to be one-third sine u minus um, the integral of sine is actually negative cosine, so this actually will be plus one-third cosine u. And now we just need to plug our u's back in. So it'll be one-third sine of 3x plus one-third cosine of 3x plus c. Problem two, the graph of the piecewise linear function f is shown. If g of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of f, find the following values. Now, if you recall, this just means the area under the curve. So first of all, to find g of 0, we're going to go into this formula and plug in 0 for the x, so we'll be finding the area under the curve from 1 to 0 of the f curve. And if you recall, we can't go from 1 to 0, so I'm going to make this the opposite of if I went from 0 to 1. So if you look at from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 is just a triangle, so it's going to be the opposite of the area of that triangle is 1 half, the base is 1, the height is 1, so this answer will be negative 1 half. Right, and then we have g of 1, so this will be the integral from 1 to 1. And since we're not covering any space, my answer will just be 0. And then we've got g of 2, which means the area under the curve from 1 to 2 of the f graph. So if I'm looking at from 1 to 2, that's another triangle. So it's going to be 1 half. The base of that triangle is 1. The height of that triangle is 1. So this will have an answer of 1 half. And then we've got g of 3, which will be the area under the curve from 1 to 3 of f. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of break this up a little bit. We've already found the area from 1 to 2, and that was equal to 1 half. And then since the area from 2 to 3 is underneath the x-axis, I'm going to make it negative. And once again, we have a triangle, so I'll have 1 half times the base of that triangle is 1. The height of that triangle is also 1, so I'm going to get 1 half minus 1 half, which equals 0. And then we've got one more to do. We've got g of 4 is the area under the curve from 1 to 4. And then um, if I go 1, 2, all the way to 4, um, I've already found 1 to 3, and that was 0. And so now I need to just find from 3 to 4. And again, it's underneath the x-axis, so it'll be negative. And it's a triangle, so the area of a triangle is 1 half. The base of that triangle is 1, the height of that triangle is 1, so we end up getting negative 1 half. And then for part b, it says which of the values is the greatest? Well, 1 half was the greatest, and that was occurring at g of 2. Okay, problem 3. This is the fun one. If cosine of 3xy equals x squared, then dy dx equals what? We're finding the derivative. Um, I'm going to let this be u, so we're going to find the cosine of u. I'm going to come over here and find du a minute. So we're going to get if u is equal to 3xy, <clears throat> to get du we are going to have to use the product rule with f and g. And f prime will be 3, g prime will actually be dy dx. Okay, so if I find du, it's going to be f prime times g, so 3y plus f times g prime, 3x dy dx. So we found that. Okay, so now the derivative of cosine of u is negative sine u du, and that will equal negative sine of 3xy times du, and du is 3y plus 3x dy dx. So that's the whole left side. And then the right side, the derivative of x squared is 2x. All right, now we want to get dy dx by itself, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to divide both sides by negative sine of 3xy. That's really crooked. Let's try to straighten it out. Negative sine of 3xy. There we go. So those are gone. So now I'm just left with 
3y plus 3x dy dx is equal to 2x over negative sine of 3xy. Okay, now I'm still trying to get dy dx by itself, so I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides. Okay, so those will be gone. And now I'm going to divide both sides by the 3x. Okay, and then from here, it's just cleaning it up. We have a complex fraction, which we're not allowed to have. So I am going to, up top, get a common denominator, which would be negative sine of 3xy, which would mean I'd need to multiply the numerator of this one by the sine of negative sine of 3xy also. And if I, oh, 3xy. If I multiply by negative, that's going to become a plus. So if I look at what I have now, I have 2x plus 3y sine of 3xy all over negative sine of 3xy and it's still all being divided by 3x um, and we're going to make this 3x over 1 so now if I have a fraction divided by a fraction I can multiply by the reciprocal and then if I do that I'm going to come way up here dy dx will equal on the top I have 2x plus 3y sine of 3xy and it's all over negative 3x sine of 3xy. Whew, that was a doozy, wasn't it? Okay, number four, the graph of the function f is shown for uh, x being between 0 and 4 of the following, which has the least value and which has the greatest value, and we'll be explaining. All right, I know for sure 1 to 4, if I'm actually finding the integral, that's giving me the true area under the curve. So it's definitely not going to be the least or the greatest. It's the value. Okay, um, a left Riemann sum approximation with three subintervals. Um, let's just get going here. If I did a left sum, I'm starting at the left and drawing rectangles, starting at the left, going to the right. And if you'll notice, that's definitely an over approximation. If I do a right sum, I'm starting at the right and making my triangles go to the left. Well, this is right. And then notice that's definitely under the curve, so that's a big under approximation. Okay, um, midpoint and trapezoidal, I know they get a little bit more accurate than those. A midpoint Riemann sum, if I went to the middle of that integral, and went to the middle, and went to the middle, sum is under and sum over. So I'm going to say we have over and under, so it's not a least or it's not a greatest for sure. And if I draw trapezoids, I'm getting a little bit under, but not much. Say a little under. So if I had to pick the least value, the right for sure had the most space that was underneath. And if I picked the greatest value, B for sure had the most rectangle that was an over approximation. So B would be the greatest value. Okay, and five, the graph of the function F is shown. Draw a possible graph of F prime, the derivative. Well, I'm going to make an F prime chart to help me with this. I know for f prime, if I'm looking at f, I'm looking at the slopes or looking if it's increasing or decreasing. It's increasing or the slopes are positive till I get to negative 3. So I'll put a plus. And then they are negative till, and it's going down until I get to negative 1. So I'll put a negative. And then the function is headed up until I get to 2. And then it's headed down after that. So this is my f prime chart. And what this is going to tell me for f prime is where is f prime above and below the x-axis. So if I go to f prime and go to draw a picture now, I know at negative 3 and negative 1 and 2, that's where the graph is going to be touching the x-axis. Negative 3, negative 1, and then 2. And then I know my graph has to be above the x-axis till I get to negative 3. It's going to be below till I get to negative 1. It's going to be above till I get to 2, and then it drops below again. So that's a um, sketch of what the derivative would look like.